Eric Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Today I've got a lesson more for the beginners and it's a kind of rhythm and lead a little bit put together sort of counting project for lack of a better word. This is something that you should absolutely be able to do. If you can't do this, this is something that you need to be able to do. If you want to play music, you want to play with other people, you want to get some basic counting, some timing, all these kinds of things, this is something that you must be able to do. <laughs> all right, and what I'm, I'm doing it in a straight feel. We're going to talk about doing this in a straight feel. We're going to talk about doing this in a swing feel or a shuffle feel, depending on, how, on what you want to call it. Uh, but, but a triplet based feel as opposed to a straight feel. Now, the first part of this is the blues in A riff, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Now, my guess is that you probably already know how to play that. If not, I have other videos that demonstrate it, so I'm not gonna do so here. But what you want to do is you want to get to where you can be able to play that at a consistent tempo. The reason that you need to be able to play it at a consistent tempo is so that you could play it into a looper or record yourself playing it. And then you can play against it this little riff that I'm going to show you, this lick that I'm going to show you that's going to help you practice on your counting. So you're going to kind of practice all on your own, but you're going to practice all the different pieces that you need to make music. Okay, so I have a little metronome right here and any metronome will do. It does not have to be fancy, but I have a little metronome here that is going to beep. Okay, now before I use this metronome, okay, here's the thing about a metronome and you've probably heard me say this before, but if you don't know where the notes are supposed to go in time, the metronome isn't going to help. So before you grab the metronome, you need to be able to play and count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. And you need to be able to play the entire 12 bar sequence with that riff, okay? And again, I have that in another video, so I'm not gonna get too into it right here. But that's the first thing that you have to be able to do. If you can't, adding in the metronome is not going to help. I hope that makes sense, okay? So make sure that you can count it out loud and play it all the way through, because if, you, like I said, if you can't, that's not gonna work out. Let's assume that you can, right? I'm gonna set my tempo here at 66 beats per minute. One and two, I should, you should be able to count along with that. One and two and three and four and one and two. Notice that my one, two, three, four, what we call the downbeats, happen right as the, at the very same time that that beeps, okay? My and happens between. You could think of it as short four and a half. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. It's hard to say, and a half. One and two and three and four and. Very simple, okay? We don't wanna make this complicated. Later, when we do it in a swing feel or a, uh, a triplet based feel, you're gonna count one and a, two and a, three and a, four, okay? So the only difference between a straight feel and a swing feel is whether we divide the beats into two pieces or three pieces. It's just that simple. So if I turn that metronome on to 66 beats per minute in a straight feel, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one that my ones and my twos and my threes and my fours are at the exact same time as the beep. If they're not, 
then you have to practice on that and get that going first. One and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and. Now if I do it in a swing feel, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and so on and so forth. I won't finish that all the way out because I think you get the idea. That is what you have to be able to do first. If you cannot do that, you're never going to be able to play along with other people because you can't keep a steady beat. Keeping a steady beat is the foundation of all music, all instruments, it doesn't matter. Drums, percussion, don't even often have pitch. All they have is the time. The time is always more important than the notes, get the time. It's super, super important, okay? So I know I have other videos on how to do that riff, and so I will let that, I'll let that stand, but make sure that you can do it in a straight feel and a swing feel to a metronome. If 66 is too fast, slow it down to maybe 55 or 50. I wouldn't go much lower than 50. It'll get hard to hear. That's a long time between, between beats. It actually gets harder if you go down to like 40 or 30, you're looking at, you know, at 30 beats a minute, you're looking at two seconds between beeps. It's really hard to guesstimate that amount of time. It's hard to kind of get going on it. About 50 is about the minimum. 60 is even better, okay? Now, from there, we're gonna do something very simple from a lead standpoint, okay? We are going to take our A minor pentatonic scale, one, Good old box one. And again, I have this in other videos, so I'm not gonna go through it. We're gonna start from the G on the second string, G, E, C, D, A. But what we're gonna do is in time, one and two and three and four and one, and then this time we're gonna do two and three and four and. We're gonna add one more note, that G down there. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so you notice I'm alternating back and forth between two ideas. Very simple, I'm just walking down the scale. You shouldn't need tab, you shouldn't need any help with that. Just, just rewind and watch me play it again if you need to. It's a very simple idea. It just walks through five notes or six notes of your A minor pentatonic scale. And I made it simple because I don't want you to have to read it. I don't want you to have to think about what the notes are. Okay, it's a very, very simple idea. So if you can play this very simple idea, and if we do, the, do it in a swing feel, one and two, uh, and notice it starts on beat two. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Da two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and da. Okay? So we now have a rhythm, a rhythm figure to play, and we have a lead figure for lack of a better word, to play. So what we gotta do is put this all together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I've got my uh, my handy dandy looper, right? Uh, I use the Boss RC3, TC Electronic Ditto, MXR has a looper, lots of people have loopers. That's, that's not a big deal, okay? Now, why am I gonna play this to a metronome? The reason that I'm gonna play it to a metronome is so that I keep my pace consistent. That way I haven't sped up or slowed down by the end and when it loops, it will be at the same tempo. <laughs> um, because if I don't, right, if I, if I speed up, let's say one, two, three, four, and I start to speed up, right? Now listen what happens when it starts over. It's slow. 
two, and three, and four, and three, and two, and it's getting a little faster. And then when it cut, starts over, oh, it feels really weird because it's like that, you know, walking through the airport and you're walking on the, the, the sidewalk that moves and then it stops, right? <laughs> so likewise, it could be the opposite problem. You could slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, and then, oh, it speeds up again. Either way, it's going to throw you off, okay? And, and I, you know, that's only four bars. Imagine how far it could conceivably drift over, over 12 bars. So that's why I'm going to play it to a metronome. All right, so let's play the straight feel to the metronome. One and two. Notice, by the way, how I always count myself in. That's a huge thing to get used to doing. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. So now it's time for the four chord. Two, three, back to the one chord. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and down to the five chord. And the four chord. And the one chord. And now one and two and three and four and one. Notice that I push my pedal again on one. And it's still going right along with my metronome. Okay, and it will continue to go right along at that same speed. It's super, super critical that you start and stop it right on beat one. Otherwise, you're gonna get kind of a little hiccup in there. And every time it starts over, that's gonna cause you some issues. Now, we can play that back. Now, uh, first of all, if you don't have a looper, right? But let's say you have a smartphone or you have a tape recorder or you have anything that will record you playing. That'll do just fine. Just play it through uh, four or five or six times, okay? Again, turn the metronome on and just hit record. And you're just gonna have to play it maybe four, five, six choruses, you know, times through the 12 bar form as many as you as you feel comfortable doing two would be 24 bars that may be enough for the exercise but if you want to sort of make yourself a jam track right you can just record it like four or five times and then you've got that to use anytime you need it okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our little figure over that one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and. So we're gonna put our lead over top of our rhythm. So let's start the rhythm. One, two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three and four. One, three and four. So I can continue to just keep playing around. That'll, because it's on a looper, it'll just keep going. You can play it as long as you want. There's a few things that that lick, I know it's just some notes out of a scale. I get that. It's not a complicated lick. But there's a few things that it's teaching you. One is not to start on beat one. Two is how to take two phrases and alternate them slightly at the end. I, I kind of made those up on purpose. There's there's some there's some stuff there that I'm I'm hoping you're gonna kind of learn through osmosis. <laughs> so make sure you can do exactly as I'm doing. Then if you want to sort of mess with it and and you know try some other licks that you know, by all means, go for it. But make sure you can do this with that simple lick and that simple variation. Okay. Let's um I'm gonna do this right now. My tempo's at 66. I'm gonna bring it down to 60. And let me show you how you would do this in a triplet feel. Okay, so I've cleared out the looper. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. Two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three. Uh, 
four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and two a three a four a one a two a three and here we go into the lake one and two and three a four one a two a three a four a one a two three a four one a two a three a turned off the metronome <laughs> And keep counting, so important. This is all about counting. So don't stop. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. And here comes around again. A one, a two, a one, a two, a three, a four, a, and so on and so forth, right? I won't let it keep going, but you should. If this is something that's a little bit of a challenge for you, you need to do this a lot because it's really, really good for you. You're playing a rhythm, you're putting a little bit of lead on top of it. This is exactly what you want to be doing at this stage of the game. If any of this is even remotely challenging for you, do a ton of it because it's super, super good for you, okay? If you're a little bit more advanced than this and this was really easy for you, Awesome. I'm thrilled. Yes, I spent a little extra time on this and I demonstrated things and I played them all the way through. And I spent a little bit more time on this than I normally would have. This is specifically for the beginners. I know that you, you might need to actually see stuff played all the way through. So I really hope that you will take your time and really work this exercise. And again, if you don't have a looper, don't worry about it. Play it into a smartphone, play it into the, the wave recorder on your computer, anything that will record. An old school cassette tape recorder will work just fine. Growing up as a kid, we didn't have fancy recording devices. I just kept one of those little, you know, uh, handy cassette recorders and I would record myself playing chords and then I would play over them. It's a, it's a good exercise. It's good for you. Okay? so. As always, if you dug the video, if you have friends that you think might enjoy it, please share it with them. I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed, and I'll talk to you soon.